Yeah. This is nice. I used to see the guys on the computer. <laughs> this is nice for us as well. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. Uh, Jordan said after the contract, you guys had a, had a moment, but you wanted to hold off until after the game to kind of, you know. Jordan up. said what? I'm sorry. Uh, Jordan said that after he got uh, agreed on the contract, that you guys had like maybe a, a small moment before the game. Uh, that weekend, and then we're gonna actually have like a nice chat afterwards. I was wondering if that chat ever happened, and um, ha ha what's that relationship like between the two of you? Well, I'm his coach, and um, you you got to realize that Jordan never played football before this this whole experience. So there's so many things. Fortunately, I, I would say that. The match between Jordan and I is probably really perfect because I coached in college for 30 years before coming to the National Football League and had an opportunity to develop a lot of young players. And so when you do that from the ground up, you, you understand what it takes to develop the player. It's not like, uh, and this was a guy that needed that. He's coming from, doesn't know anything about the game of football. And we had to go back to those to those times and really develop him from that standpoint. And he's still developing, and he's doing a wonderful job of it. If you envision the best case scenario when this started, would it have been you know, where he's at now and the contract he got? Like, like, is that even in the realm of possibility? When, when Howie and his staff uh, did a great job. I know I've told this story to you guys before, but when they when they called me up and asked me, it was vacation week and I was going on a golf trip and and with my buddies from high school and I was like, you got to be kidding me! I got to cancel my trip to go. He said, no, this is an important. You gotta. So we, I went and worked them out and I was like, wow! I couldn't believe. Like I was like, just a big person like that could move and change direction, and I was so happy I, that that we did that and. Um, I, I felt like this guy, the sky's the limit. I really did. I felt like uh, that was my report when I came back. But did I think, I, I don't know. I don't know if, I, I just felt like the guy could be special. So Scott, when, when you saw the size, the athleticism, uh, all that, the strength, when did it kind of, the light go off, click for you, said, okay, this guy might be good enough to learn the technique, the other parts, to where he could become what he is? a starting left tackle. Did, did you have that moment? I just, no, I just felt like that was my job. I mean, I, we, we brought him in here, and it's my responsibility to, to coach those, those things, and I've done this for a long time. So I, I, was, I was very confident that we could get him. And again, guys, there's still a lot of room to go. There's still a lot of improvement to, to, you know, that needs to happen. But he's done really a good job of um, – uh, under, trying to understand the technique, trying to understand uh, angles, and again, this is all strange for him. It's all new for him. He didn't understand any of this stuff, and uh, the players around him that have helped, I can't tell you enough. I mean, they, the guys around him are constantly, he, he's getting it from me constantly, okay, but and sometimes you get frustrated and you're going, but, but, and they, the guys around him will take him all the time off to the side lane, explaining the same stuff that I'm saying, but it's coming from another uh, point of view. So um, I just think that there's still a lot, a lot of room to grow, and he's done a great job to this point. How we have, how we have said before, and you have said that you like guys who are, who are outliers, who are unusual in, in certain ways. Why is that important to you instead of finding guys who you know, are maybe more ready to play from, from the very beginning? Because I heard the question earlier about, did you feel like he could be that special? When I evaluate, when we evaluate offensive linemen, and, you, and you, you look at a lot of film, and you're trying to stack these guys up, like who's the best in the draft, and who's, and then at the end of the at the end of the film, you sit there for one, at least I do for one second. I have what I call critical factors, and, and these are the things I'm looking at, and then I just sit for a second and I look at, I say to myself, what is unusual about that player? What is there that is he giant? Is he quick? Like Kelsey, is he explosive and quick? Does he? What is it that has that? And and that's kind of how we do that. Like we decide whether or not one guy is a little has a more potential than another guy. And when we worked him out, when I worked him out, I was just like, wow, this guy, for a guy his size, from other players that I've worked out, he just was extraordinary.
and and I knew he didn't play any football, and I know that he, you know, so we did also did an interview with him in the classroom, and uh, I know he probably told you guys that story about how I didn't know anything about that, but he had gone back and tried to see the writing on the grease board because I said I was coming back. I, w I taught him something. Then I erased it off the grease board, and I said, I'm coming back tomorrow at this time, and I'm going to have you teach me what I just taught you. And he said he ran back in after I left and tried to see the, the, the stains on the grease board or whatever, but, uh, yeah. Did he, uh, did he know? Did he, how did he do the next day? Uh, I would say that um, uh, he needed to come here and let me coach him. <laughs> <laughs> We had a no. That was at that was at IMG. Uh, what was it? What is it about his temperament that makes him probably uh, equipped to be able to play in this town and follow someone like Jason Peters? Um, and, and is there something about his temperament that makes him ideally suited for that? Yeah, I think that he's uh, well. Number one, he's very likable. He's just a real likable guy. Um, uh, he's very serious about what he's doing. Um, and I think that um, there's a mixture of, of, of a lot of good stuff, in my opinion. What is unusual about Landon Dickerson? Same thing, very big, strong. Um, he is the type A, um, he's, he's very similar to Kelsey when it comes to like the, you know, um, I want to make sure that my teammates, uh, like, because I'm the center, I want to make sure that I put them in the right position. It's my job. If I got to spend extra time, if I got to put in more time to sit down with me and go over the film, make sure that everything's pointed right, the protections are all, and he, he takes the conductor of the band. My, that's, what, that's what he's like. And, and he's really talented. So. How has Andre Diller handled, handled this situation? Well, Andre had injured during during camp, and so that kind of hurt him. That, that he was he was doing well. He, I really mean that he was doing well. I was very happy with the, some of the things that he was doing, and then he got hurt, and then it became like, oh man, here we go again. And so then the thing unfolds, and and he's like, and I said, Andre, when you're not one of the five starters, you have to play multiple positions, and he's been great with that. Been playing, he's been playing right tackle, left tackle, learning because it's a different when you go to some guys have a much easier time going to the right side. So he's been working on that right now, and that's been uh, been going pretty good. But some guys like when Jordan was swinging back and forth, no problem, no problem. We had other players here in the past; um, they had some issues going to the right side, and then other guys, no, no problem because it is there's a balance issue when you when you change. You know, you don't want to be leaning outside when you're on the right side. So you take a left side player who's usually leaning inside and you put them on a the right and now they're leaning. So some guys have no issues with that, some guys do. Do you find that uh, when guys don't have issues it's because maybe they're a little bit newer to the game? Andre had been playing left tackle since he was in high school. I would, I would agree with that. They all, the whole life they've played on one side or they've been, they've been programmed to do it a certain way and I would, I would agree with that, yes. So. Or if a guy's played in high school or college, multiple, like played on both sides, like been your uh, approach in terms of your relationship with with Jordan. I would, I would imagine learning a new sport in a three-year period of time, being far away from home, there's got to be a lot of lows uh, that he's gone through um, that maybe had to work out. So how, you know, what kind of uh, relationship, what kind of things do you think about um, to that has kept him sort of, uh, you know, on a straight and narrow and hitting the right buttons at the right time from an emotional perspective? Yeah, I think everybody's a little different, you know. Everybody kind of has a button, and and um, I said Jordan never played football. He 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 never he never played pop Warner football. He never played high school football. You know, the little guys. When I used to recruit Texas years ago, I used to go to those little the practice. But then I'd see the little guys off over the side, the little the little guys deal, and I would go over and watch. And they would put telephone poles down on the ground, and they had these little guys, and they'd be in the middle, and they would just fight each other push try to block each other through the end of the pole and I'd be like this is unbelievable but they learned toughness they learned how to be like they understood like you know Jordan never had to do that ever in football and I'm like well 
I guess I got to be like that coach. So sometimes, sometimes Jordan, like, it's like, God, this guy, can you let up on me a little bit? Like, no, no, but it's for your own good. But he knows, like, I care an awful lot about you. I care about all the players, but I understand my responsibility. I understand what we have to do to get this player to, to get to, to be the best he can be. And we're not letting up from that. In speaking about this summer, you said that the, that spot needs to be in sync with the other four guys. It needs to kind of speak the same language, move as they do. How have you seen that? And when you watch your starting five now, are you seeing it like a, a true starting five where they're all yeah. on sync now? Good question. I, I definitely see that happening. And I, I large, I think a, a, a part of that credit goes to Isaac. You could come around here. Um, I know you guys are not allowed in the building all, all day long, but you'll see, I'll, sometimes I'll run into the meeting room running fast to get to a, a staff meeting or something, and I'll see Isaac will be sitting in, in a, um, the old line meeting room. The door will be shut, and I'll have, to, I'll forgot, I have forgotten practice plan or something. I'll go in there, and I'll be like, there's Isaac. And there's Jordan, and it's and it's Jordan and it's Isaac going through, you know, each detail, all the little details about how we're going to do this thing, you know, and I just think that's pretty awesome. Like, step back to Landon, um, your history at Alabama. You mentioned with Jordan, you're you're from ground zero, building him. Yeah. Yeah. You know how Nick does things in Alabama. Yes, I do. Uh, did that? Did that? Is that give me a leg up with you, or is that just uh, a little bit overrated? No, it's not overrated. I know what he's been through. I know what he's been through uh, uh, in his college experience, and I understand. Um, but now it's now I have to assess. Say, what are we? What 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 is diff going to be different for him, or what what do I feel like we have to do to help him develop? Okay, and I know exactly what those things are. So. He and I, Landon and I, have talked about some of these things, and and we work on them in individual periods. I know when you guys come in during the, the early portion of practice, you'll see me over there, and I'm picking, hand selecting certain things to work with on each player, because that's their I call it their one up. You know, this is my one up, and then once we get that mastered, we move on to a new thing that we feel like, you know, we have to be better at. Is it hard to find one-ups for guys like Kelsey and Brooks and Lane? No, I mean, yeah, but they, they want they, – there's always something in this game that you can improve in and work on. There's so many little details, so many little things that if you don't operate or you don't work on those things, they build – you get rusty. You get uh, – and, and then you're asked – that's why uh, – you know, when you're away from football for a while and you come back to uh, uh, OTAs or you come back and you can see, oh, but he's played for some, I'm telling you, there's an adjustment po period there where, and, and the best part is I'm surrounded by such awesome guys that I don't have to say to them, hey, guys, we haven't been, you know, even been doing, they want me, they'll be like, coach, don't forget to give me this block. Don't forget to give me that block. I need this or I need that. I don't have to do – they remind me. Kelsey will remind me. Hey, you didn't give me that block uh, uh, in a couple days now. I need to get one of these with Isaac, and I need it to be, you know. I don't know if you saw that block last week. Uh, we scored on that little run uh, where Isaac and Kelsey hit that block. When I could tell you, if I sat – you were there. You were out there early before practice. They were talking. Sometimes before we strike the block, you'll see them talking to each other. And the guy that's holding the bag, they'll be like, this is where we want you to be. Here's the, here's where at the angle we want you to run across the ball at. And then Isaac and Kelsey will talk to each other about, here's what I'm going to do. Here's where I'm going to be. This happens all the time. Anybody see that? It goes on all the time. That very thing happened in practice that happened in that game. You talk about what happens in practice happens in a the game. There's, there's like a clinic film of what the coach is always saying. I know you're very hands-on, but how have Roy and Connor helped in Jordan's development as your assistants? They do a lot. They do an awful lot. Um, uh, Roy's doing something right now as we speak. Uh, Connor has been unbelievably helpful from a personnel standpoint when he looks at the def defensive side of the ball, and he'll give us um, – He'll talk to our guys about, you know, because Connor knows all that he's been coached as a defensive lineman all those years. And so 
he'll be able to talk about a lot of different things from footwork to how a player's trying to set you up. You know, that's that's the other thing with Jordan. Like, um, Jordan is playing a position where he's on an island all the time. So every little thing, like every little detail, you take the wrong set line, you uh, don't use your hands properly, or you go too deep, or you go, you give up a sack. And this is not like, this is like, like, I say to him, do you understand how important this is? This is not, this is serious stuff now when we're going through these. And I give a lot of credit to him because he gets me. Like, he, he, he's the perfect match for me because he's like, he's, he gets me, but yet he still has a little bit of la- like loose, like you talk about being a Philly. He's serious about this, but he still has that personality about himself that, you know, it's good for, he's good for me too, by the way. As it goes, how has uh, he seems to be kind of the unheralded member of that line for whatever reason? But how is he different now than he was five years ago? Who's this? Isaac Siamalo. Oh, um, I've been saying this for you guys for for a while now. I can't tell you how our players know. The players in our room know the value that Isaac Siamalo brings to this organization. I've said this for a long time. Okay, the guys played every position on the offensive line, including tight end. He knows every position. He knows, he, he knows every pressure that anybody ever runs that we present in our meetings. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. He's quick. He's explosive. He's detailed. I mean, I can't say enough about Isaac. I think the world of him. Has he been always that way, or has he progressed? I mean, how has he No, been he's now? progressed. He's progressed, but these last couple years, these last two years, he's really accelerated. You brought up Melada meeting with him. For, I know you have another question, but... Um, was there a guy who kind of set the tone for him in doing that, uh, that Isaac maybe learned from behind the scenes, like Isaac's working with Jordan? The whole group. I think that the other guy that helped a lot was uh, Jason Peters. Jason Peters helped uh, a lot of these guys here. Um, but he would, JP would really like focus on, like the guys that were really wanted to learn and they were eager to, hungry, he was always going out of his way to kind of spend time and help and teach. And I think the rest of them, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brandon Brooks, Lane Johnson, uh, Kelsey, Jason Kelsey, uh, these guys are all the same way. They, all they want to do is help be be- get better, help each other, like I talked about on that combination block and how they talk about, they talk through it all. So they're together. So everything's synchronized. Hi. Right. 